Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth, interactive study of the Word of God. Well, we're coming to the end of an amazing series on the Psalms, these inspired scripture songs. We have been studying for this series, and you can, if you've missed any, go to our website, hopetv.org slash hopess. You can watch the entire series or go to our YouTube channel. They're all there. You can watch. We've been on a journey learning about the powerful, inspired messages of these scripture songs. Today, a vitally important topic, waiting on the Lord, both now and as we wait for His glorious appearing. So glad you're here. Welcome to Hope Sabbath School. And welcome to the team. Good to see you again. Give a wave to all of our Hope Sabbath School members around the world. We're just glad that we can be together. We've got some remote team members. Haiti, great to have you back with us. Glad you're here today. Leah, always good to have you. Glad you're with us today. And Travis, good to see you. I'm just so thankful for our remote team members. Uh, add something uh, to our discussion. But you are also an important part of our discussion. And that's why your emails to us are so important. You write to us at sshope at hopetv.org. You make an important decision or you have an insight to share from your study of the word. We want to hear from you. So remember that email address, sshope at hopetv.org. And we'll look forward to hearing from you. We're always happy when we get emails. Here's one from James in Namibia, in former German West Africa. James writes and says, My family and I appreciate most the fact that the class studies are biblically based. Amen. Amen. This enables us to confidently share messages of truth with our neighbors. Amen. 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 Yes. yes. God. You're part of the miracle, James. Thank you for writing to us. He concludes well. He says, James and family from Namibia, we're glad that you wrote to us. And thank you for sharing the truths that you're learning. Here's a note from Julia in uh, New York, actually Long Island, New York. Hello, Hope Sabbath School. Hello. Hello. I think they say that so they'll get the wave. <laughs> My name's Julia from Long Island. I've been watching Hope Sabbath School since 2019. And I love the interactive Bible study. I love you all. And those testimonies have been an inspiration and encouragement to me. Well, uh, Julia, you'll hear some testimonies today that will be a blessing, I'm sure. But thank you for pointing that out. I have shared the link for the program with other families. Amen. 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 Right? Yeah. Thanks so much for your ministry. I'm glad I was able to contribute to Hope Sabbath School. Let's continue to pray and share the truth with the world. May God bless you as you continue to be a blessing all over the world, Julia. Amen. Amen. Well, Julia, thank you for taking the time to write to us from Long Island there in the state of New York. We're happy you're part of our Hope Sabbath School family. Here's a little handwritten note from Washington State. That's in the northwest part of the United States. And a donor couple write, and they say, Your Bible class, your Bible study class, and all other programs are such a huge blessing to us. The Lord is blessing you mightily. God bless you all. That's a lot of blessings, isn't Amen. it? <laughs> and a gift of $200. Oh, praise God. To bless the ministry. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You know who you are. Thank you for writing to us from Washington State. We're all part of a great miracle, all working together. And your gift means a great deal. If you want to be part of this miracle, you say, Derek, could I do a little something each month? Or maybe someone just gave me an inheritance. Or I just, I have something like someone said, my saving account keeps getting bigger and I'd like to help. <laughs> Go to our website, hopetv.org slash hopess. Click on the donate button or get an address and write us a note. Let us know how you're blessed through a study of God's word. Thank you for all you do. One last note from Az in Mali. Where's Mali? Anybody know? 
Yes, Lelika, it's close to home, isn't it? You're from Guinea-Bissau. Where's Mali in connection to where you live? So it's just east of, of my country. Towards the, toward the center of the great continent of Africa, yes. right? All right. I'm in the coast. Well, Oz writes and he says, Hope Sabbath School is an opportunity for all of us to study the truth of God's Word together. Mm -hmm. It comes back to the love of God through Jesus manifested by the Holy Spirit, changing our hearts. Amen. <laughs> that was a good summary, wasn't that it? Was. <laughs> I appreciate that the lessons do not stray from the Bible. Mm. Amen. By the way, Mali is predominantly non-Christian, right? Mm. The discussions are clear, simple, and honest. Mm. We can study like the Bereans <laughs> who search the Scriptures Daily, daily, daily. Mm -hmm. to see if those things were so. Mm -hmm. What a blessing. Thank you. Well, thank you as for writing to us from the country of Mali, not too far from Lalika's home country of Guinea-Bissau. We're thankful that God's calling people from every nation, kindred tongue of people. Am I right? Amen. Amen. Right. And we are just so happy that you wrote to us. And we'd like to hear from you. You say, well, I wrote five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Write to us again. SS Hope at hopetv.org. Let us know how your life, your family is being blessed by an in-depth interactive study of the Word of God. How you've been blessed and now blessing others as you share what you have learned. Well, this is the last opportunity for you to get a beautiful collection of Trilogy Scripture songs from the Psalms. There are six of them. And the theme song, Psalm 105, O Give Thanks to the Lord, is one of them. All you have to do to get your free collection is to go to our website, hopetv.org slash hopess. If you say, I don't have a pen, well, take a picture of the screen. <laughs> hopetv.org slash hopess. Go to the website, click on the free gift tab, and it will let you know how you can download that collection of six Trilogy scripture songs, including our theme song for this series. And I love this theme song. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. I'm singing it in my sleep. <laughs> and I want to invite you to sing it with us just now. Let's pray together, Father in heaven. We want to call upon your name just now and give you thanks that you are a great and awesome God. We want to thank you for this series on the Psalms, these inspired scripture songs preserved for our blessing. And today, as we conclude our series with the theme of waiting on the Lord, mm. I pray by your spirit, you would teach us what that means and the blessings that come when we wait on you. I thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 We're going to begin our study in Psalm 27. And Nancy, if you would read the last two verses of that Psalm, Psalm 27, 13 and 14, we are introduced to a concept which we want to study further, and that is 
waiting on the Lord. I'm reading from the NASB, New American Standard Bible. I would have despaired unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for the Lord. All right, mm. that translation, wait for the Lord. Some other translations, wait on, the, on, on the, the Lord. But there's this idea of waiting. We want to explore that. By the way, just a note to our Hope Sabbath School members around the world, that's one of the six scripture songs uh, that's on the free collection that you can download for this series. Trilogy scripture songs from the Psalms is Psalm 27 that we just read. Uh, it's one of my favorites. But let's go, Stephanie, to Psalm 37. And I'm going to ask you to read three verses from that Psalm, beginning with verse 7, verse 9, and verse 34. And let's hear this theme again. Maybe we'll learn a little more about what it means to wait on the Lord. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version, verse 7. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Verse 9. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Verse 34. Wait on the Lord and keep his way and he shall exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, you shall see it. Mm. All right, and now I want to hyperspace to uh, Isaiah the prophet. He lived about 300 years after the psalmist David. And I'm going to ask Leah, if you'd read from Isaiah chapter 40, we moved out of the Psalms here, but we'll see this is a common theme in the scriptures. A beautiful passage in Isaiah 40, verses 28 to 31. Sure, I'll be reading from the English Standard Version, Isaiah 40, verses 28 through 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Mm. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They will walk and they will not faint. Amen. <laughs> Anybody else love that promise besides yes. me? Isn't that a beautiful? Someone's raising their hand in Mali, maybe, or in the Philippines, saying, Derek, I love that promise. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. having heard this theme repeated, wait for or wait on the Lord, can someone tell me what that means? Mm. Yes, Haiti. What do you think it means? It's, it's not just talking about like passively waiting around, right? No, um, and if we can, I would like to go to one of my favorite verses in the Bible. It's Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. Okay, and, and then you'll answer the question of what it means to wait on the Lord, right? Proverbs yes. chapter 3, verses, verses five, and six. 5 and 6. And what mm -hmm. translation of the Bible are you reading from today? I'll be reading from the New King James Version, and it says... Trust in the Lord with all your heart mm. and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Mm. So in my opinion, part of waiting on the Lord is living in submission to him mm. and living in his will mm. and learning to um, make that a part of everything that I do. Even if it's a simple thing, how, how you dress, is this according to his will? What I'm eating, is this according to his will? What I do, is this according to his will? What I say, is this according to his will? It's doing things God's way versus man's way. Mm. Well, thank you, Haiti, for pointing that out. So you, you're quoting from Proverbs there and, and, and the idea of 
acknowledge him and he will direct your path. That's part of the waiting that you're talking about. Travis, you want to add to that? What, what does it mean to you from hearing the scripture now, not just a personal opinion, but from the scriptures, what does it mean to wait on the Lord? Well, Derek, I, you know, I, I agree with what she just said, but, but again, I want to share a story from the Bible of an individual who literally had to wait on the Lord. Okay, uh, tell us the story. And you don't have that to read is it. Daniel just tell chapter it to us. 10. Okay, just tell it um, to us in your own words. Okay, in, in Daniel chapter 10, Daniel has uh, fainted. He's, this time prophecy has um, boggled his mind. He, he, he doesn't know how to process it. He doesn't understand it. And he fasts for 21 days. Um, and, and then um, Gabriel the angel comes to him and uh, he says, um, we heard you, basically, we heard you, but, but there's a battle behind the scenes that I've been involved with. And it's taken 21 days to complete this battle, and now I've come to answer your prayer. So it wasn't that God hadn't heard Daniel's prayer, but I think waiting on the Lord, real, we have to realize there's a cosmic battle behind the scenes. We don't know what's going on, mm. Mm. and God has to operate um, within the free will of, of each person human person so it has to be in his time he knows the beginning from the end we can trust that our prayers are heard and the story of daniel shows me not only that i can trust but that they'll be answered as well Amen. Mm, powerful Amen. thank you for sharing that bible story i want to give you an opportunity to share a time a season of your life well let's talk about jesus first because even jesus had to learn to wait on the lord uh, if we if we believe what Travis just said, and it's certainly biblical, mm -hmm. Jesus was in the middle of a great cosmic battle, right? So where do you see in the life of Jesus from his birth, growing up in Nazareth? Where do you see him demonstrating, John, waiting on the Lord? Then we see Jesus at the age of 12 in the temple, and then there's no record of what happens until the age of 30. And 18 years. Mm -hmm. And the only kind of verse that kind of shows what was happening is the Bible says Jesus grew in wisdom and stature in favor with God and man. Mm. That waiting period, mm. that's what Jesus was doing. And there's one other phrase there, I think, in Luke that says he was obedient to his parents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's right. But that's a long wait. Mm -hmm. Because if, if we understand from Scripture, he said, I must be about my father's business. At age 12, he's beginning to understand, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he waits until the father says, now is the time. Mm -hmm. Jason? Yeah, I was thinking about Jesus' first miracle at the wedding when he told his mother, you know, my mm -hmm. time has not come yet. So Jesus understood that there was a time, you know, in God's eye of things to be taking place. And mm -hmm. I believe that's the understanding that we need to, is what Jesus mm -hmm. explained, you know, that basically, you know, the timing, you know, has to do with everything when it comes to God. <laughs> and if we read that story in John chapter 2, I'm, 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 I'm thinking that Jesus probably said, Father, is this so, really the time? Right. And the Father said, yes, now is the time. Mm -hmm. Not just because Mother asked, right? Exactly. But now is the time I do nothing of my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Pedro. I see Jesus' baptisms uh, experience after, after his baptism. He was taken by the Spirit to the desert. Now, Jesus was there for 40 days, mm -hmm. and he was being led by the Spirit. All his life was led by the Spirit. And we look into the aspect of waiting you know, what, what we, some people ask, what was the purpose for God to be 40 days fasting on the desert? And that time, sometimes we ask why we're going to desert times in our lives. Mm -hmm. that, and, and how is the Holy Spirit guiding us? And the Bible gives an example of Jesus. Even Jesus had to wait. He was there in the wilderness. Uh, the beautiful biography, The Desire of Ages, says he was contemplating his mission. Mm -hmm. So he's praying, listening to his father. Now you mentioned that we may go through those times of waiting too. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask a question, maybe of one of our remote team members, whichever one wants to raise the hand, a time when you had to learn to wait on the Lord, when, uh, when you had to learn to just, uh, well, like Haiti said, in all your ways, acknowledge him and, and kind of wait for him to direct your path. Mm -hmm. Anyone have a testimony to share? I'm looking at the remotes. I'm not seeing a hand, but I see Puya's hand. <laughs> Puya, tell us a time when you had to learn this, this idea is not just waiting around, right? Mm, no. But being attentive to God, asking Him to direct your steps. 
I would say it's a constant lesson that mm-hmm. God is still teaching me every day <laughs> right. to wait on Him. Mm-hmm. Because we live in a day and age where we want everything right away. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. We, we go through fast food, we want a fast <laughs> internet speed, mm-hmm. and it's hard to wait on you know, getting results when you go through a test or when you go through an examination. Mm. But uh, looking at the scripture, there's so much wisdom in learning to be patient, Mm -hmm. learning to wait on God, especially in the context of Psalm 37 we read earlier, in the face of evildoers, Mm. in the face of so much suffering in this world. Mm -hmm. I believe the lesson is, the lesson that God is teaching me is to trust that there's a timing that God will step in. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yes. uh, Tendi, a time when you you had to learn to wait on the Lord. Yes, um, I had to learn to wait on the Lord in the context of marriage. Mm-hmm. I waited fourteen years mm-hmm. to get married. Fourteen uh, years. Yes, um, I'd been studying courtship and marriage uh, the way God wants it to be, and it was exhausting. The way <laughs> there's a lot of prayer that went into it. But the moment on the 14th year, I gave God my heart and I asked him to Mm. find me a husband. Mm. So he did that (laughs) at the 14th hour, the 14th year. (laughs) So I I don't know when was the first year. I'm guessing the first year of the 14th was when you felt like that got you wanted a life companion who would love you and love God. And so kind of I'm ready for that. And, and you waited 14 years yes. because you didn't want to just marry any man that walked by. Mm-hmm. That's right. But you wanted to wait for the person God had in mind for you. God's choice mm-hmm. for you. We're going to get a lot of emails <laughs> about that because uh, someone would might write, maybe you write and say, Pastor Derek, I, I wish I'd done that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I wish I'd waited on the Lord. Uh, and let him lead. That, that's very practical, Tendi. Thanks for sharing. Travis, waiting. A time when, when God maybe taught you uh, what it means to wait on the Lord. You know, Derek, that's exactly um, what comes to my mind is uh, I was a lesson that I learned. And many have heard, and I'm not going to tell the story again right now, of the, the cell phone call, you know, you and I had been involved in when when. God miraculously dialed a phone. Uh, But what I did learn from that is I was on fire. I just learned about God's goodness and I just wanted to go and do these things. And, um, and I fell flat on my face, you know, kind of in the sense spiritually, you know, and I realized now looking back that God was knew that I had some things personally that needed to be taken care of, that I wasn't ready to do to get involved at least to the point where I wanted to be involved and that I had some life lessons to learn. And, and through a series of events, um, he, he, he taught me that it's all in his timing. Mm -hmm. It's not in my timing, Mm -hmm. even though I desire to just go, um, his, he's saying, wait, I I have to get you ready. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was really an important lesson for me. Right. Powerful. Stephanie, I'm going to ask you to go with us to Psalm 131, because one of the things that we need to learn is to be at peace while we wait. Um, Yeah, we may wait 18 years like Jesus did from 12 to 30, Mm -hmm. 14 years like Tendi did in her testimony. Mm -hmm. Uh, Someone might say, Pastor Derek, I've waited half my lifetime. How do we learn to be at peace? What insight do we get from the psalmist in Psalm 131, verses 1 to 3? And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Lord, my heart is not haughty, nor my eyes lofty. Neither do I concern myself with great matters, nor with things too profound for me. Surely I have calmed and quieted my soul, like a weaned child with his mother, like a weaned child is my soul within me. O Israel, hope in the Lord from this time forth and forever. All right, I'm going to ask Nancy a question because I've met some of your beautiful children. (laughs) So what's the difference between a nursing child and a weaned child first? Mm. And then when a weaned child comes, what what is that saying? And, And what can we learn from that about waiting on the Lord? 
Yeah, well, yeah, I had three boys, and I remember the process of them becoming weaned. And I think what it's talking about here is that you're going to trust that, well, I'll say the child at some point is no longer nursing, and they decide that they're going to trust that their mother will provide them with the food that they need in the way that she's going to do it. And, um, and they're okay with it, and they feel at peace with that. Mm -hmm. And so that's what God wants us to do, is to trust that He's going to provide for us at the time he's going to pro provide for us. So even though when that little one, depending on how, age, how old they are when they stop nursing, mm -hmm. is now weaned, did any of you boys still come and snuggle with mama? Of course, <laughs> Right, yes. and what, what's happening at that moment, would you say, and what can we learn from that about this attitude of, of resting or waiting at peace in the Lord? Well, because they, they know that you still love them, and they still feel security and peace mm. um, in just snuggling with you. Um, but they're growing, and so they're no longer going to be nursed by you. You're going to feed them in a different way, but you still love them and, and, and provide for them. So, uh, I'm, Haiti, I know you, you've got a couple of, uh, they're not little anymore, are they, Haiti? But, uh, but, but when one of your children comes just to spend time with you, are they stressed out that you might not feed them for the next week? <laughs> I mean, are they really anxious that they might be evicted from their bedroom? Uh, no, not at all. Uh, as a matter of fact, they say that when a mother nurses a child, it releases um, a hormone that uh, bonds them mm -hmm. for life. And in the same way, I think God, when we come to him and we, we cast our cares upon him and we learn to fully surrender to him, I think it bonds us in this way that you come now. And like you said, uh, Nancy's boys will still come to her lap. And my children will come to my lap and, and some of the um, team members may not have children, but you have a mother and you remember what it's like to go to your mother's lap. It's this place of safety, of no fear, of peace. And that's what God is saying he wants to have with us, what he does have already if we come. Mm. We want to move on to another section. We could stay there. By the way, I don't want dads to feel left out either, because <laughs> I know that a wean child can come and snuggle with dad too, right? Yeah. And know, uh, Pedro, I know you have a beautiful little girl, Bianca. You know, she knows she's safe uh, to come and rest. And at the right time, Papa will provide for her, right? Mm. Mm. But there is, as we continue our study about waiting in the Lord, there is the idea of working while we mm. wait. So it's not waiting around in idleness, right? It's not waiting around in inactivity. It's that waiting in the Lord, resting in Him. Yes, you know, the beautiful image of resting in his arms. That's so beautiful, isn't it? But uh, Puya, could you read for us Psalm 126, verses 5 and 6, and then we'll go to the teaching of Jesus. What is the special mission that God gives to all of his children while we learn to wait upon the Lord? Yes, I'll be reading from the New King James Version, Psalm 126, verse 5 and 6. Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. He who continually goes forward weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicings, bringing his sheaves with him. So put that into kind of practical language for us, Puyu. Mm. What does God want us to be doing mm. while we're learning to rest in him, to wait on the Lord, to in all our ways let him direct our path? I believe when it talks about sowing, that's sharing the good news of Jesus, planting seeds in the hearts of people while we wait for that hope of the soon return of Jesus mm. to be in the work of sharing the good news. All right. We know waiting on the Lord is not inactivity. Mm. It, it, it involves action, right? Mm -hmm. So Puya has said, well, it's the precious seed that right. we're sowing with the promise what? What does it say, Haiti? The promise that will come again 
with what kind of attitude? Rejoicing. In verse 6, I don't know how that is in your Bible. Mm -hmm. We'll come yeah. again rejoicing. with rejoicing, mm -hmm. bringing our yeah. thieves. I was thinking of what you say at the end of each Hope Sabbath School lesson, where you say, don't just keep it to yourselves. Go out and be a blessing to others. Mm -hmm. um, so that's <laughs> what I hear here. You have been blessed. Now, literally, go and share that same thing so that others can also be blessed. Mm. Mm. You know, Jesus uses that same metaphor of the harvest uh, when he's speaking to his followers. And Lalika, could you find Matthew for us? Chapter 9 and verse 37. Um, and let's see the instruction. You might say, well, that was just the 12, but he actually gave the same direction to the 70 who represent all of the, the children of, of Noah, actually. Uh, what, what instruction does Jesus give in Matthew 9 and verse 37? I'll be reading from the New King James Version, Matthew 9, verse 37. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Mm. And would you read on now in verse 38 for us, Lily? Of course. Therefore, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Okay, so back Puya, to your comment earlier. Uh, if the harvest is great, mm -hmm. what does that mean? Uh, we've, we've got Psalm 126 you read. What does it mean that the harvest is great? There is a lot of people who are waiting to hear the gospel, the good news of Jesus. Okay, mm -hmm. they're waiting to hear, but the challenge, Travis, the challenge is that the laborers are few, and why is that? If, uh, if we're not supposed to sit around idly, you know, some people, they, it looks like they're just trying to stay out of trouble till Jesus comes. <laughs> but actually, that's the best way to get into trouble, isn't it? Yep. You've told me in your testimony, that if you want to see God work in miraculous ways, get involved in His work, right? Mm -hmm. Get involved in mission. Mm -hmm. Why are the laborers few, Travis? You know, Derek, I think, um, you know, and I don't want to speak for everybody or po try to point out, you know, anyone's issues, but I, I believe that we've become distracted. I think it's interesting in John chapter four, Jesus says something similar. He says, you say there's four months and then come the harvest. Mm -hmm. But I tell you, lift up your eyes and look, because the, the fields are already white mm -hmm. for the harvest. I think, um, the instruction of Jesus is to look because he was using the fields and it generally takes about three to four months for any crop to grow, whether it's beans or corn. And so when the, when the disciples looked out over the field, they're like, actually, they're, we're just planting. There's nothing to harvest. But Jesus is saying to them, it may not look like there's a harvest, but there's a harvest. So maybe some of the problem is we don't even think there's a harvest in the area, but Jesus says there is. We need to be intentional about looking for any mm -hmm. praying for that harvest um, opportunity. Amen. Thank you, Travis. You used the word distraction. John, I'm going to ask you to read for us the, the passage that Travis alluded to in John chapter 4, mm -hmm. beginning with verse 34. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful passage about Jesus interacting with someone that his disciples don't even want to talk to. Mm -hmm. But God is going to use this woman at the well to impact a whole city. Mm -hmm. But uh, let's look at what Jesus said. Travis alluded to it in his uh, earlier comment. Mm -hmm. John chapter 4, verses 34 to 38 from the English Standard Version. It says, Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me to accomplish his work. Do you not say there are yet four months, then comes the harvest? Look, I tell you, lift up your eyes and see the fields are white for harvest. Mm -hmm. Already the one who reaps is receiving wages and gathering fruit for eternal life, so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true. One sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored and you have entered into their labor. Mm. Mm. What is the outcome, Pedro, when we join the Lord of the harvest in this work? We're not just waiting around, right? Fully surrendered to him, 
enjoying the beauty of his presence, right? Like a weaned child with its parent. But but what what's what do we experience when we join the Lord of the Harvest? Joy. In you know, going back to the Psalms, we see experience joy in the Lord is the most amazing thing to see someone accepting Jesus in their lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I can I can share myself. Many I, I, I'm addicted to Bible studies because <laughs> <laughs> not just Great. your own Bible study you're saying, but sharing, sharing with others. Yeah. Yeah. Studying with someone, I tell people I don't give Bible study. I study the Bible someone because there's something always for me there that God is convicting me because I'm still growing in Christ. Mm. But looking into this aspect here, many people said, well, the Bible says that, but wh why, why is it not happening? And I, uh, I have a little garden in my backyard, and I know some plants, I have to use a little cutter to make sure I get the, the fruits or the, or the vegetables out of it. And the other ones I have to use my hand. Maybe we need to ask God, can you use me as the right tool or make ourselves available to be the right tool because we always wanted to do the same way for the same people or different people. He says, no, God says, let me work through you. Mm -hmm. There's still different ways that we can reach Christ, but the best way is Christ's method. So I'm going to pause and ask if there's someone that has a joyful testimony mm. of joining the Lord in his harvest work. And we're not all going to hold you know, big series of meetings, right? There's lots of ways that we can share the love of God with someone. John, did you tell us a time you experienced joy, mm -hmm. not just waiting around, mm -hmm. right? But waiting on the Lord and working while you wait. Mm -hmm. There was a lady who uh, grew up in the church, but left the church during the teenage years, uh, went through some difficult times because of an accident. But she was shopping at Giants, and she uh, came across the church that was right, right next to the shopping complex, and she walked into the church. And so, the long story short, I get I introduced to her, uh, me and my friend began studying with her, and she eventually got baptized. And then I will never forget what she told me on the day she was baptized. Uh, she said, I am here because of you. Of course, because of the Holy Spirit. But God uses what people, God has right? Done. And mm -hmm. that was so meaningful to me. Mm -hmm. And how did you feel? Joyful. <laughs> <laughs> right? We rejoice. The sower and the reaper rejoice together. Puya, can you think of a joyful experience? Uh, recently, uh, we had a revival camp meeting in Pennsylvania with, uh, with a youth group from the church. And my heart was very burdened looking at our young people of the church. Many of them seemed disinterested. They came mm -hmm. just because their parents asked them to come. But I, I, I asked the Lord, I said, God, I cannot bear this burden. You know, mm -hmm. you have to do something here. And as we labored together with our other team, the youth leaders, and as we studied the Bible, at the end of the, the meeting, you know, they, the, the youth started sharing their testimonies mm -hmm. and how the messages landed one of them came to me and said, Pastor, I got what you were trying to say. Mm. Thank you for sharing me that. Mm. And when you, when you see the light bulbs coming into their eyes and you, know, you, you see the wheels turning in their heads, when they're starting to understand, oh, this is how God wants to reveal Himself to us. There's no better feeling in the world than knowing that God is you know, using you to bring people to Him. Mm. So for those of you sitting on the front row, Puyi was smiling while he was saying that, right? <laughs> Leah, I want to ask you a question, then I'll come to Nancy. Leah, you've shared in various programs that you lead worship music, right? You're, you're saying that's a gift God's given you. Um, can you think of a time when you were working while you wait, so to speak, you were using your gift, leading music, and you saw God work and it brought joy to your heart? Yeah, um, I think there are many instances of that. Um, I was leading worship a few weeks ago, and it was a song I didn't know very well. Um, it was a song I wasn't quite confident in, and I wasn't quite sure that it was actually resonating with people. Um, so I just, I, I tried my best. You know, I asked the Lord to, to strengthen me, to produce some sort of message. And I saw a man in the back of the church, the only man in the sanctuary, or the only person in the sanctuary, he had his arms raised um, in worship. And I was so thankful that in my moment of inadequacy, it seemed to land with someone. Um, there have been many times that I've been singing for different events or whatever, and um, there's almost a darkness, you know, it, it almost seems too hard to, to do. Like there's a spiritual darkness that happens and it almost becomes physically difficult to sing praises to the Lord 
Um, but God has always helped me overcome that. And there are always people that are blessed through the gift of music. So I'm grateful for that. So that reminds us of the great controversy. By the way, in a previous study, John led uh, this raising hands is really worshiping God, isn't it? Honoring God. And one person in the back, <laughs> a man, God was speaking to him through that music. And, mm -hmm. and Leah, I saw by your smile that you experienced joy. Ten oh, excuse me, Nancy first and then Tendi. Yeah. So um, this has to do with waiting on the Lord and then also God <laughs> turning things around for us. Um, my husband was building a fence for, around our house. So with this one, our kids were younger and there was just one piece, maybe between, like from that desk to here that needed to be filled in to, you know, so he had a post there. He talked to the neighbor because we wanted to connect to the neighbors, um, to their fence. And we just needed to, you know, connect from our post to there and then we we're done. Right. Cause my kids wanted to have a dog. Okay. So, my husband went and talked to the neighbor and he said, sure, no problem. Unbeknownst to us, his wife didn't want that to happen. And so, um, you know, we couldn't, we couldn't finish. And we, so um, eventually we started praying about it. And so we just like every day we're going to pray about it. <laughs> and so um, my husband was praying, oh, please change the heart of this, um, of our neighbor's wife, you know, it's just, you know, it's for our kids. And, and so, and um, I even went over there and talked to her and I know she wasn't having it. And I'm like, what, what is the problem? And, you know, we kept praying and praying. And then as I got to, I went over and talked to her again. I, I realized, oh, they have needs. Let's, let's, let's pray. So it changed us. Then we started praying mm -hmm. about what needs they had, what concerns they had, what, and, and it totally changed in, mm. Instead of so us waiting for, on the Lord mm -hmm. to direct your path, change the way you were Changed thinking we about were the praying. situation. And then my husband started praying. Um, no, let's have let, praying that God would bring her to our house to um, talk about the situation. Like, why? That's he, how is he going to answer that? It happened. Wow. She came to our house to tell us that she wanted to, you know, yeah, that it was okay. So God is good, <laughs> but, but he changed the way you thought, yes. but, but, but that was very practical. I never thought of waiting on the Lord and fences and dogs. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> pretty practical, right? But right. uh, learning to wait. Thank you for sharing that. Tendi. So, um, growing up, I was a very shy person and I had a good voice, but at home I was like at my home church. I was considered one of the background singers. So when I moved to the US, I asked the Lord to give me a voice where I could minister to him, but I was still shy. The first solo I sang was at our wedding with Scott um, as my vows to him. And ever since then, I have been singing in the way that people come to me and say they've been touched. They've been moved. Praise I should God. sing more often. Mm. So I just want to praise God. That's courageous that. to have your first solo <laughs> at your wedding, right? <laughs> well, we want to move on to, to a, actually something that's in the title of our program, Hope Sabbath School, mm -hmm. because the Sabbath is a time when we can rest in the Lord while we wait. And I want to look at um, two verses that may be very familiar to some, but not to others. Jason, if you could read Mark chapter 2 for us and verse 28, Jesus is speaking. All right, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. And the Bible says, Therefore, the Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. Now, someone maybe, maybe is watching Hope Sabbath School, maybe you're watching, you say, I don't know this Hope Sabbath Sunday School, you know, I don't know the word Sabbath. <laughs> right. So it's like a Sunday school, mm -hmm. but Sabbath is actually found throughout all the scripture. I still remember one gentleman who actually came here watching Hope Sabbath School, and he said, I started reading the Bible, and it's like Sabbath, 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 right? Right, right. Uh, we're in the commandments is this conversation about mm -hmm. the Sabbath. Haiti, can you, uh, there's, there are 10 commandments, right? We know we shouldn't kill. We shouldn't steal. We shouldn't commit adultery. Uh, where's that commandment that speaks about the Sabbath? And, and interestingly, the word, the first word in that commandment is rather significant. Would you read so, that? Us? Yeah, absolutely. So it's in the fourth commandment. It's it's kind of like right in the center, in the core of the Ten Commandments. And I will gladly read it. Um, I'll be reading from the New King James Version, and it's Exodus 20, 
verses 8 through 11. And the first word we to ask is remember. Mm. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Now, some people think Sabbath day of rest means you sleep all day, uh, <laughs> but that's not what it talks about, right? Hmm. We, we want to go to worship. We rest in the Lord, in the worship. But Jesus also taught that it's good to do good mm -hmm. on the Sabbath. So I have a practical question. Raise your hand. The practical question is, how do I know when this work is something that should wait for a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or when it's something that would be good to do on the Sabbath, because it's good to do good. How do I distinguish, anybody, between what should wait for another day and, and what would be good to do on the Sabbath? Pedro? Well, I, I look into the principle of the Bible. You know, Jesus shows the aspect of need for others. Mm -hmm. You know, if I'm doing anything for others on the Sabbath, it's a good rule of saying this is good to do on the Sabbath. Now, you ask us, can I do this in a few days? Can I plan this ahead? Mm. Says, yes, you should plan things ahead so you can spend time devoting with others in Scripture and spending time with the Lord. But, so, but if you have an emergency, as the, Jesus comes to the Pharisees and says, oh, if you have a mule that is stuck on the ground, mm -hmm. would you just not do anything? And uh, mm -hmm. I can share uh, one time I was out of the church, and uh, there was mm -hmm. this member who had a car problem. He forgot his key inside the car running. Oh! Now we had to run to get uh, a tool to re well, to open his door so he can go back home and obviously not have the car running all day on the parking lot. <laughs> so you would see that like the ox stuck in the ditch. Mm -hmm. Jesus mm -hmm. also used that when he talked about healing someone mm -hmm. on the Sabbath, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's good to do good, good on yeah. the Sabbath, right? right? So there was a distinction. Someone else, uh, Lilika, how do, how do we d distinguish? There might be a time when God says, Lilika, do it now, do it today. It's Sabbath, but it's good to do this good thing. Well, the Lord does not con contradict himself, and he that gave the law gave principles or ways, as we have mentioned. He said what to do or not do on the Sabbath. Of course, it's not everything, but we have general principles of what to, to follow. And uh, in case of doubt, we can always go to him and say, Lord, I want to honor you. I really have this desire of honoring you. What do you say? All right, so I could ask. Mm -hmm. I came home from church, actually, Pedro, and someone next door was sitting with the, um, the hood of his car. Uh, we call that a bonnet in England, so I had to make, remember I got it right. But the hood of his car open, he was looking in. Now, you have to know that most people, especially us men, even if we know nothing about the engine, we still look inside there, hoping we can find some help. Well, I just came home from church, and he was next door, um, a Christian gentleman, next door, he was looking, and I went over to him, and I said, uh, Michael, what's the problem? He said, my, uh, my battery is dead. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, well, I have jumper cables right here in my car. I, I'm happy to just hook them up for you. And uh, he said, oh, I wasn't going to ask because I know it's your Sabbath. <laughs> and I said, well, Jesus said it's good to do good. Now, if he said, would you help me, you know, paint my car <laughs> or do some body work or, where I just <laughs> dented the side of my car, right? Mm -hmm. But maybe he needed to do something. Right. But I like what Lalika said, and that is we can pray yeah. and say, God, is this something that I could say, I'll, I'll be, I'll come by on Monday. Mm -hmm. Or is it something that I should do today? Did anyone want to share a testimony? Because we want to certainly rest in the Lord on the Sabbath, but we also can work while we wait. Yeah. Can share a time when 
when you were resting in the Lord on the Sabbath, but you were also involved in, in serving others in a meaningful way. Anybody want to give an opportunity? Haiti, I see you waving over there. A time, it was meaningful to you, and you say, well, going to church is wonderful, singing hymns is wonderful, um, praying is wonderful, but, but doing good in Jesus' name on the Sabbath is also wonderful. Share, share your story. So I, I went to a church where on one, one Sabbath of the month, they would go and they would feed the homeless. Mm -hmm. And that entailed a lot of work because we actually went to an area that was a, a ways from our church. And we had to take tables, chairs. We had to pre-plan um, the meal and prepare the meal and bring plates and utensils and all of the things. But once a month we would go and we would do that and we would talk with them, mingle with them uh, while we served the food and while they ate. And sometimes we would eat with them. And uh, that was something that we did where I would feel happy because I like going to church. And Jesus gave that example very clearly that that's something you do on the Sabbath. But I also like, you know, to get outside of the four walls of the, of the church. He, he called us to go. And I liked that because it was a way that we could go and we could um, minister to others. Um, on another occasion, I remember that we went door to door inviting um, families to a fun event our church was gonna have. But at every house, we would also ask, um, can we pray for you? Is there something we can pray for you for? And I was really surprised that all these people uh, um, just started opening up. Even people you wouldn't have thought would have opened up. They would be like, oh, yes, pray for my family, pray for my uh, sibling, pray for my child. And I, I remember feeling just so satisfied at, at the end of that day and that event, coming back and having prayed for people. Beautiful. Joy. Joy. Well, I want to go to our last section and a verse. Nancy, I'd like you to read for us in Psalm 30 and verse 5, because uh, while we're waiting, we're also waiting in some ways in a valley of tears, aren't we? Mm. We're waiting in, in a place where there is still this great battle between good and evil. Yeah. But there's a hopeful word the psalmist gives in Psalm 30 and verse 5. I'm reading from the New American Standard Bible, and it reads, Weeping may last for the night, but a shout of joy comes in the morning. <laughs> mm. I like that translation, Lalika. So I have a sixth point that I took from this lesson that we have been learning, that uh, waiting is cruciating. Right. It's, it's painful, depending on how much you desire that thing. And that, um, we are, we have this desire of doing the things our own way. But in the waiting, God, it's so precious because God takes that time to make us to examine, self-examine ourselves. While we're waiting. While we're waiting. It's a time of self-examination and preparation. So it's so important, but we don't want it mm -hmm. because we want what we want. Yes. And uh, in that time, as we go to God, as a, a child go to the mother to be win, mm -hmm. is a time where we... we we learn to trust his promises and rely on him to Amen. rest on him and um, have uh, that faithful assurance that uh, the one who promised is faithful. That Amen. He, one day the joy will come. So what Lilika says here, sometimes the waiting can be excruciating, mm. but the promise of joy coming in the morning, back to the text that you just read, is that talking about tomorrow morning? Is that talking about sometime in the future? Or is it talking about the, res let's say you just lost a loved one, mm. how does joy come in the morning? Is it talking about that great resurrection morning? What, what do you mm. think the text is referring to here? I believe in the biblical sense, it's talking about that ultimate uh, resurrection morning when God is going to recreate everything. Mm. Mm -hmm. And in, in, in the context of what we have been studying, I believe waiting on the Lord can be trusting in advance mm. what will only make sense when we look back from that uh, point in the future. So Lalika is pointing out that that waiting can be very painful, excruciating even, mm -hmm. but let's talk about losing a loved one. Uh, someone here, someone watching, you've lost a loved one. 
It's painful. It's it's excruciating to use the word that Lalika used. But uh, how how does your grieving? Is there anyone here who's lost a loved one, John? How does our grieving, painful as it is, differ mm -hmm. from those who've not learned to wait on the Lord? Mm. You know, I was close to my grandfather, but then he passed away. He did not uh, he did not believe in Bible truths. But in his deathbed, he told us that if he were to walk again, he would be baptized again, mm -hmm. or he would be baptized. Okay. And so that were his parting words. Hmm. And oh. so that was a hope, or we have that hope that we will see him in the resurrection Amen. morning. Amen. So s the loss was still painful, mm -hmm. yeah. but you believe that joy comes in the morning, mm -hmm. right? Anybody else have a testimony? Because we live in a world where there's pain, mm -hmm. where we experience loss. Um, could joy come earlier than the great resurrection day when Jesus comes? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Certainly so, yes. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. You experience a loss of some kind, but joy comes in the morning. Mm -hmm. Pedro? Well, I can relate with John. I, I lost my grandma during the pandemic. I was unable to go to back to Brazil, mm -hmm. and she was the one who raised me. You know, I was a very dear mm -hmm. person. And you weren't me. able to travel back. Uh, yeah. And there was a lot of restrictions during that time, so I would have never been able to even see her in the hospital or, or even anything. And the nature of you know, having that last minute experience, mm. I was able to talk to her on a FaceTime uh, a week prior to that event. Mm. Now, looking forward to that, uh, I have hope of the resurrection of Christ. I know that she has Jesus on her heart. And that's why I labor to share the gospel because mm. I, I don't want to only see Jesus, but I want to focus and also take time to see my grandma mm. when the resurrection day happens. Mm -hmm. So as, I want to disperse my energy, not mourning for her, but to say, oh. I'm looking for it. So you still grieve though, but yes. you want to focus on mm -hmm. helping others to be ready. I like the translation, not only joy comes in the morning, but a shout of joy, New American Standard Bible, a shout of joy comes in the morning. Can you imagine, can you imagine on that great day, but God may give you joy tomorrow morning too, if you learn mm -hmm. to wait, to rest in Him as we've studied. But that great day, what a shout of joy when we are not only with Jesus, but those we love and those we've shared the gospel with who've chosen to let Jesus save them and be part of His eternal kingdom. Let's pray that we can experience that joy today and look forward to that future joy. Father in heaven, you want us to rest in you now, to wait on you now, to trust in you now. But you also give us joy for the present and the future. May we rejoice in the joy that only comes from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, thanks for joining us for this series on the Psalms. Practical lessons as we live in this troubled world. But what a joy we have in Jesus. Go out and share that good news with those around you.